OBS is the no BS free open source video screen recording platform and I'm going to teach it to you really quick in a very very simple way. It may seem intimidating at first but I'm telling you you have to learn this platform if you're doing any type of screen recording at all. So the first thing you're going to do is search for OBS project in your favorite search engine or just go to obsproject.com link in the description and then you are going to select the operating system that you're working with. In my case, it is Windows. And then you're gonna find the download, open the OBS Studio, and then it's gonna ask you to click Next and read through some information. We'll do that quite quickly, and we'll select Next. Then it's asking for a destination folder. I will also throw this in Downloads. And while it's installing, I wanna remind you that this video is sponsored by water. Don't forget to drink eight cups a day. Setup has completed, we're gonna hit finish. And then it's gonna load OBS and you should see this layout right here. Now the easiest way to get started is you hover over tools over here. You're gonna click on that. And then you're gonna click on auto configuration wizard. And here it's going to ask you about what you wanna use the program for. So in our case, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're gonna select optimize just for recording. I will not be streaming. Once I do that, I select next. Here it's asking us for the base resolution of the canvas or think of it as the screen that you will be recording. Now over here it says use current 1920 by 1080 or display one that is 2560 by 1440. That's actually the resolution of my screen and I'll show you that in a second. So a helpful tip for you here, if you go to your desktop and you simply right click and then select display settings, you will actually see your exact display resolution. And because mine states 2560 by 1440, that is what I'm going to select in OBS Studio. FPS just means frames per second. Now, the reason you wanna keep it either 60 or 30, but prefer 60 when possible, is because if it's on 60 and there's a lot of movement, it will be a lot smoother. These are the frames per second. For those of you that are into photography or videography, you know that. The more frames per second, the smoother it's gonna look. Now, why do some people use less? Because the specs on their computer just can't handle it. But if you have a newer computer, I would definitely select either 60 or 30, but prefer 60 when possible. We're gonna go ahead and click next. Here it's showing us a summary of what we've selected. And you can see that it's high quality medium file size. I would definitely recommend that. And also the base canvas resolution, even though it's 2560 by 1440, the output is going to be scaled down a bit to 1920 by 1080. The purpose of my video is not a feature film. I'm just trying to upload something to YouTube and 1920 by 1080 is fine. That's gonna be HD and the frames per second will be 60. So I will click apply settings. And now we wanna further tweak some settings. So we're gonna select settings right here in the bottom right. You're gonna go to output and I'm gonna recommend two things here. First of all, please make sure that your recording quality is high quality medium file size. It may take a little bit longer, be a larger file, but you want it to be high quality. So then we're gonna go to the audio tab in settings and under global audio devices, what you're gonna do is you're gonna select desktop audio and hit the drop down and make sure that you are selecting the speakers of your actual device. And then you are going to go to the mic auxiliary audio. We're gonna select the drop down and you're gonna make sure that you are going to select the microphone that you have plugged in to your device. In my case, it is this one right here. Then we're gonna hit apply. Then we're gonna go to video and over here, you'll see that the base resolution, this is set to the screen resolution. We did this earlier and also the output resolution. If you don't want it to be scaled down, you can hit the drop down here and you can actually match it to the base canvas resolution. In my case, I'm just uploading this to YouTube, so I don't mind it being 1920 by 1080 and scaling it down. Frames per second, we already covered. When you can, leave it at 60. Now we're gonna go over to the hockey section and here you wanna create a few shortcuts for yourself. So definitely you wanna have a shortcut for start recording. We will make that F1. For stop recording, we're gonna do F2. And also to pause, 
we're gonna do F3, and to unpause, we're gonna do F4. I love to do this because rather than stopping your recording, then doing something and then starting it again, you can just pause your recording, Google something really quick, or figure something out if it's not working out, and then once again, unpause the recording. It's so helpful, and other even paid or premium products don't have this. OBS Studio is amazing that it allows you to do all of this. And don't forget to click apply whenever you're making changes to your settings. Now you can see in the audio mixer that we have both of our desktop audio and our mic auxiliary showing. Now something I really recommend is that you select this and bring it down a bit. The reason being is that if I yell and this mic ever goes into the red section right here, you're gonna hear a lot of like pee pops and un bearable sounds to the ear and you don't want your audience to experience that and that's why I would always drag this option down a bit and then the desktop audio you can also toggle this as well a lot of times I recommend bringing this lower than the actual mic because if you're showing background stuff but then you want to talk over it sometimes you really won't be able to because the desktop audio is going to wash out the audio of the mic and so you can actually toggle that by bringing it down and that way if I start speaking, it'll be nice and loud and overshadow and eclipse the desktop audio. Now let's add some sources to our scene. As you could see right now, our screen is perfectly black right here. So if we go ahead and we actually hit that plus, you can now select what you want to be in your scene. In my case, I'm just trying to capture the display. So I will select display capture, but if you're gaming or if you just want a window captured or if you just want an image captured you could select other sources here in our case we're just gonna select display capture I'm gonna retitle this desktop display we're gonna hit OK and now you could see that we're actually seeing our screen. Now don't worry about this endless screen going into another screen like an inception situation. This is not how it's actually going to record, so it's fine that it does this. And by the way, if you're curious what this eye thing here is, that's just if you wanna hide it from your scene, then you can unhide it. And the padlock here, if you select this on, basically during recording, you won't be able to actually accidentally remove it. Uh, so that could be helpful too. I'll keep this checked off. And now what I want to show you is how to add an actual webcam to our recording. So we hit this plus icon here to add a scene. And here we're going to add the video capture device. This is going to be the webcam on whatever device you're using. And I'm gonna title this webcam, and then I will hit okay. And as you can see, you can now see me on here. So we're gonna go ahead and select okay. And as you can see here, I am actually able to drag it. It's really helpful. It's showing me the exact pixels that it's on if I wanna be super exact. You can also see that I can click and drag it around. And also if I wanna place it to the corner, it kind of snaps to it, which can be helpful as well. If I select and hold down shift on my keyboard and then I drag, you will see that it will distort the image. So I don't wanna do that. I could just control Z to go back. And also if you want me to create a separate tutorial to show you how to turn this into a perfect circle, I'd be happy to do that as well. If you want to further tweak the settings of any of your sources, what you're gonna do is you're gonna select the source, so for instance, webcam, and I could click settings, and you will see a whole plethora of settings here. Something helpful that I wanna point out is if you go to your desktop display and you click settings, you will actually see an option to capture your cursor or not capture your cursor. And that is going to be helpful if you're making tutorials and you wanna have an actual cursor that you are going Going to be capturing so that people can follow along and see exactly what the heck you're doing. So the very last thing that I want to cover is how to start recording, which is basically you hover over here and you click start recording, or in our case F1, because we put that in as our shortcut key. And where is the actual video going to go when we stop recording is if you go back to settings here, you will see that in the output section, you can actually dictate the recording path. And that is the folder where all of your recordings are going to end up. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and I helped you out, please do help me out 
by liking, commenting, subscribing to the channel, tell your friends about me, and let me know in the comment section what you wish for me to cover next and make easier. A lot of the tutorials online, they're outdated. Some of them are too long, too annoying. I'm trying to shorten it, make it basic, make it easy for you, and also refresh my own knowledge on how to use these tools. I appreciate all of you for watching this video in its entirety, and I will see all of you, hopefully, in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.